So um, unification. On the uh, class web page, uh, there's a little, I think your textbook has a lousy description of, of unification. And I found one that I thought was actually pretty good and scanned it in in total violation of copyright. And so here it is right here. So just click and here is an explanation of unification, um, which I like better, especially if you like ever want to implement it. Um, so uh, I, I don't forget about that. Um, here's an intuitive version of unification. So unification is when you've got two, I think they're technically called terms, like a predicate with its arguments, um, and you want to see if they match up. So you're doing this recursive descent along the term list of, of both of the instances of the predicate. Look, you're traversing both of their argument lists at the same time, <coughs> trying to see if you can match them up. Okay, so it's, it's a mildly tricky code. Like, you'll be glad you took 671 when you write this code. Um, so, we're in it right now. oh, you're in it right now. Oh, great. Well, you'll be so happy <laughs> for some version of happy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I think of that class as involving a lot of recursion. Am I right? Not yet? Oh, okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> you'll feel great having successfully implemented unification. Um, so, oh, thank you so much, Matt. Lifesaver. Uh, the, so the easy, the easy case is when one of the arguments is a constant and the other is also a constant. Because if they're the same constant, then life is good. And if they're not, then fail. Because you can't unify two constants together. So we're good with line two. Line three, uh, if one's a constant and the other is a function, Yeah, because they don't necessarily line up. Um, now, when the other one is a variable, you know, a variable can be referring to anything. So we'll just say, hey, wow, it's with a constant. That's great. So then you want to, then we, we're going to say to ourselves, okay, from now on, this variable, we're going to have it be the constant. And you can choose in your implementation whether you right then and there quickly rewrite everything to have the constant in it, which might. Keep your mind simpler, Frank. Um, so if there's something other than yeah. the variable, yeah. is there any implementation function that you can use for the variable? Like, for example, if you have a function and you want to use that variable to use variables to record things, like use variables to record things, function, function, function is like mother of John. Can we unify that with fish? Or even mother of X? Holy, how about holy mother of X? Yeah, but maybe she's not. So like it might possibly be true, but it could very well also not be true. And we want to like derive things that are valid. Yeah. Like, oh, it's true. Yeah, hopefully. Well, we haven't, I, I, I kind of skirt the whole issue of talking about equality. Um, I mean, in order to really know that Mary is the mother of John, we would have to have somewhere like equals mother of John, Mary. Um, and I kind of avoid the whole equals thing. Um, but you could think about it that way, yeah. Um, okay, so like this, is, this is all straightforward so far. So now we have a function and we're trying to unify it with something else. We know that something else isn't a constant because otherwise we would have been in line three. So now we have two functions, so they're still different. If they're the same function, then we can go look and see if the argument lists unify. 
And if they do, great. And if they don't, too bad. Otherwise, we have a variable. And um, we will talk about this next time, if the variable occurs in the function. Um, and otherwise, we're going to have two variables. Because we've done the case in which one is a constant, one's a function. So otherwise, they're both variables. And then you just substitute one for the other. Um, OK. So that's unification in brief. We'll talk about case eight on Monday.